As you mentioned, Marcello, uh, the uh, amount of uh, talent that we have here is just incredible. Uh, Juho is uh, just uh, sort of one of the uh, kind of new up-and-coming players of this generation as we uh, go back to us yeah, here just for to just quickly, a moment. Yeah, just quickly fix the names and life points. Yeah, we just have <laughs> a uh, just slight a technical moment. issue. But yeah, uh, they're gonna, they have uh, started play here just now. We'll be back there in just a moment. Uh, Juho, one of the me sort of most uh, up-and-coming players recently over the last uh, year or so, especially with the release of Power of the Elements, he was absolutely tearing things down, playing Tier Limit uh, across the multiple different formats over last year, getting very good uh, results, and of course, getting into the uh, World Championship final this year. Uh, a great talent, and uh, I'm sure he'll uh, make a name for himself regardless of the outcome of this matchup. Absolutely, and uh, as you mentioned, I mean, for anybody who just tuned in, uh, we did see both of them this weekend already on stream, so their decks are quite known, and although Joe tends to think there is a bad matchup, he's on the Labyrinth deck, uh, not a surprise. While well, Joshua is playing uh, quite a unique deck in this top cut, I mean, it's runic, so we know how much he loves those cards, uh, and he just mixed them with bestials and, you know, some incredible tech cards that seems like are working out for him quite well. Yeah, no, there's a lot of different um, engines being played here, and I guess, uh, most surprisingly, I don't believe there's any Rescue Ace left in top 8, right? I, I think, think there's one. Only one. One man. top. Yeah. It's crazy. To so it, there's also tier, so our pick. Yeah. Did you pick Centurion this time around? <laughs> How's that going <laughs> for so you? Much, not so much. <laughs> not so much, but actually, technically, we'd say there is uh, even more Rescue Ace because there is. The only tier left, actually, mm. I think he's playing the Rescue Ace package, which is oh, quite interesting. Oh, if he's going okay, to win yeah. one, it's I guess picks. you both win and <laughs> just lose. Yeah, that, that works. Yeah, that's our pick here. <laughs> yes, but uh, before, I guess, uh, jumping into the match, we can show the top eight bracket real quick while we fix uh, it. So this is what it's looking like. Obviously, we saw all of them, but we can also talk a little bit about the road that they had to face. Joshua knocked Simon E. We said it, top of Swiss, uh, still he will walk home with the oversized Anadiverse Glutonia, so nothing to complain about. But on the other end, uh, Juo also had quite the run, but we can move to the other side as well. Yeah, this has been an incredible path taken here by these players. I mean, just uh, so many different uh, amazing talent that's had yeah. to be... Uh gone through here just because of the, 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 the competition is just at its absolute yeah. highest. And now, you know, I, I wish we could just show all of the top eight games. Yeah, look I mean, at look this, this. Gabriel Nets versus Dinka Boy is going on their way right stuff. now as well. Just titanic amount of uh, talent in this top cut here. And over on to the next slide, we've got uh, another uh, incredible bracket. Yeah, I yeah. mean, Paco was showing up. He won West Yes Brazil this year and also he came up third place at West Yes Richmond. And uh, maybe his first time playing here in, uh, in Europe. It wins a West Yes. <laughs> could be, could be. It happened before. And as you see here, again, Victor to end the last top eight. But as we mentioned, uh, we will focus on the first of these matches, which is Joshua against Joe. Let's go back because they are just starting off. Back to the table here. Apologies for the slight uh, technical error, but we are now starting off our play here. The uh, first motion taken part is uh, Joshua Schmidt, of course, winning the dice roll here. Big unfortunate start from Juho, losing with a one and one. And uh, Josh is going to start off with the Bestial Labellion, adding the singular copy of the Bestial Magnamut. Potential usage in this matchup here, hitting the uh, lovely uh, the furniture pieces out of the graveyard. It's yep. uh, a lot of good utility here. But Josh is playing the Bestial Runic deck. Uh, it is Ooh, a. That's it. But just wow. one face down. Maybe what, what uh, Joe said. Please break. It yeah. didn't work. <laughs> Let's I guess see. we take that trade. In the end phase, we're going to discard the Chandraglir plus the Infinite Impermanence. We do, in fact, actually have a starter here so that we can get our engine rocking and rolling for the next turn. The big welcome has been set directly from the deck, and now uh, Juho is going to be in a decent commanding position here. Joshua Schmidt, I'm not sure how many uh, different hand traps he plays. There's probably Ash Blossom in his main deck, yeah. yeah. Uh, the synergy between the runic cards and hand traps Oof. can't be on this. That's a pot of extravagance at the start of main phase one here. Juho with a dream star, all things considered, with that yeah. dice roll. Banishing six from the top of the deck here, and now you get to draw two. For Will Greed is not a bad card. Yeah, what no. a start from him. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, this is as good as it gets, I think. And uh, wow, uh, really unfortunate hand from Josh here as we also have picked up an Ariana, the best normal summon in the deck here, searching out any Labyrinth card 
from your deck to your no hand. Response. No response from Joshua. So. so what do you think the overall game plan is for Labyrinth in this matchup? You know, there's so much like tricky things you need to deal with with uh, against the Runic deck because there's a lot of protection with things like Fountain. It's kind of annoying to deal with, with Hugin Protection, the advantage it generates. I mean, you'd think Labyrinth is the deck that generates a lot of advantage, but Runics are, uh, I mean, three cards in one almost yeah. for each piece. It basically depends on the trap lineup that you have because uh, we saw this weekend uh, a lot of these uh, Labyrinth players cutting on, uh, you know, Skill Drain and some of these trap cards, and then it's all up to what you can get. Because in the side deck, uh, most likely do is to use Epidemic Virus, which is amazing. But in the main deck, that's not really popular this weekend, right? Yeah, I think Juho is citing the copy of Eradicator. So uh, if at some point there may be in this whole match here, the flipping of the Eradication. Uh, but we're going to actually set here the field spell, Labyrinth Labyrinth. And that's going to get double value with the Lovely for multiple destructions. And I think this matchup, you're going to see a lot of back and forth interaction. There's going to be so much taking away of resources and generating, isn't there? Yeah, I mean, the, 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 there's a lot of stuff. You enter Battle Phase, right? Yeah. 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 Just a nice little poke for 16 here. Could go for the big welcome as well, potentially. Joshua is thinking whether he wants to take this damage or... No, he does go for a Bestials. What does he target? Because there is also a chance to play around that, potentially. Let's see. So Juho sort of has to make the decision here. Do I save my Stovi Torby and prevent the Magnemut from coming down? Or will I go for the Lovely to get the uh, added uh, sort of bonus of having the destruction effect here? Because if, if the Magnemut hits the field, then the Lovely does as well. Uh, mm -hmm. You are going to be able to actually destroy the Magnemut and it won't trigger. So that's an option. That, oh, actually goes for the duality that's set here. That card not really... Uh, that sort of acted as a bit of a... Um, how would you say? A uh, tech card, right? Yeah. For the uh, deck here. And something like that kind of... Oh, no, we've also the got the Bestial Druids where I'm just a big hand of uh, Bestials. Very fortunate that Josh's turn wasn't really great. But because well, we've drawn a lot of Bestials, yeah. we can get value out of the Darks. The, the only thing is, I think... Did Joshua even activate the Magnemo? Because it looked as if he chained that right away, but then the sequence would have been that you need to declare first the Magnemo and then chain the Druids Worm, you know? Didn't look at, to me as if he did declare that, but we'll find out later on, I guess. Yeah, probably just on resolution, right? You can use yeah, the but quick the, effect. The problem is that you need to chain it to the Chandler gear, because they are both, uh, you know, trigger effects. Both triggering? Yeah. Okay. But whatever, we'll find out. Regardless, they are close friends, so there is also the chance that, you know, Joe was like, it's fine, whatever. So. All right, so punching over the Magnemut here. Drew's Worm is slightly annoying to deal with mm -hmm. because it hits the graveyard. It will be sending a cart. But uh, yeah, main fist two, we can get something back, and it is again the big welcome. Ooh. Wow. First hand. <laughs> That's a huge Great turn. Yeah, no, that set three cards is massive here. And yeah, Joe just gonna take a read of this duality, and then Joshua is gonna add the dragon. Imagine if he has the Ice Dragon Prison. Yes. <sighs> yeah, that is actually that would the literally one of the main be deck. a Dragon Prison at this point. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. Okay. Looks like Josh has just drawn a handful of uh, Beastials. Beastials yeah. here. Actually, no. Sorry. This is the search in the end phase yep. uh, for the Magnemot to get the third Lebellion. And that's going to probably search out another Bestial. And hopefully, Josh has seen a Runic card at this point. That would be really good for him. Yeah, but it might be too late because if you see just one, you need a card to discard to just get the Fountain. And then he only has three cards in his hand at the moment, I believe. I think Joho is uh, deciding whether or not he wants to go in the standby phase here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks like we're going to have a very early big welcome. And, well, I mean, you have so many options here. You've got the Ku Clock that's uh, available to be added back if you can trigger one of the furniture. You can special summon basically anything out of the deck here, maybe potentially the Lady, uh, or rather the Ariana to get the Lady. That's going to give you more value, but actually goes for the furniture here. We're going to go for a Stovey Torby to bounce to the hand and then destroy the Druid's Worm with the Labyrinth Labyrinth. And then also Lovely gets to destroy as well. Wow. Yeah. Nice sequence here from... Yeah, uh, great stuff here by Joho. Let's take a look at this snipe, though. This one is important. Three cards in hand. Oh, it's the middle one. It is... Ooh, duality. One. Is that another duality? Oh, gosh. What that a hand that was, yeah. Actually truly has bricked here. That is not a good hand at all from Josh. But now at least he gets to get rid of this lovely, and uh, there is hope, uh, at least a little bit. 
All right, let's double tech uh, the uh, grave effect of duality, which is banish this from the graveyard and target a light and a dark in your grave, and then shuffle both into the deck yeah, and get it. draw and there one. There was a cold buy. Oh wow. Okay, so let's see. Do we Oof. still get the target a light and the dark shuffle both into yeah, the deck? Yeah, so you don't. Result. Yeah, you yeah. do not wow. get the draw here, <laughs> based on that PSET. So Juho has. Wow kind of everything to respond to this, wow. Yeah, especially because like now Josh is left yeah. with uh, one copy, pass. which is not, yeah. And he passed back. Uh, pass back, Nibiru in the hand here, discarding with the Stovi Torby, getting a regular welcome from the deck here. Yeah, this is brutal from Joho. I mean, he did say it, please break. <laughs> <laughs> that, that works, I guess, so. And the wow. extravagance, <laughs> turn after turn, drawing once more Pot of Greed in this deck with basically no downsides. I mean, sacrificing maybe Chaos Angel, I suppose. Only three cards left in the deck. Did he yeah, yeah, go for six? Sure. It was six, right? Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. those are the only one remaining. Three remaining. Basically. Yep. Literally, like, two cards in your extra deck that you need in this deck. It's basically just Muckraker and the Chaos Angel. And do you really need them? <laughs> That's the thing. Yeah. When when you nice resolve, bonuses. yeah. When you resolve uh, true extravagance, probably you're good without them anyway. Oh, we have a shuffler as well with discarded <laughs> yeah. off of the Chandrigly. That's more disruption. Yeah. Shufflers can put back runic cards that have been targeted with the fountain. We can put back bestial targets, Lebellion. I mean, so much value yeah. here. This Those is... are by far the best cards he has yeah. as tech cards in his deck against Joshua. Check the Ku clock. Add it back. I mean, this is looking. Yep. Extremely grim here, and you can see Joshua kind of smiling. He knows, uh, he knows what's up. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. this is uh, really, really rough here. Unfortunately, welcome after I, th I think I believe we're in the battle phase yeah. right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, uh, Juho did point out that it's a really <coughs> bad matchup for him. But I suppose if your opponent doesn't really do much, then it becomes uh, quite a positive matchup here. It's been quite favorable. Comes a humble matchup. Yeah. <laughs> Are you guys going to, like, let me live that down? <laughs> no, no, no. I am. All right, there's the ball drake here yeah. targeting. We can I mean, dodge with the shuffler here. Yeah. Oh, that's actually just incredible. Because you can just summon from deck with the big welcome anyway. Oh, this is That was kind of a rough. tell, because uh, Joshua did not use his Lubellion. So it was, at this point, almost guaranteed that the last bestial was also in the end, and that was the case. Yeah. So very unfortunate. And it's basically two dualities and all the bestials he plays, so... Putting back the lovely into the deck, summoning it back out with the big welcome, just completely for Flexing free. Flexing on him almost. Yeah. yeah. And then I'm triggering everything in the grave here. Yeah. Then going to get rid of one more card from Joshua's hand. And <laughs> it's it a Lebellion. <laughs> the last card in hand is a Ball Drake. And I don't even know what you can possibly top deck in this situation. Yeah. Try and summon the, the Ball Drake again, bring out the yeah, uh, Lebellion, is, uh, something like that. Yeah, there is, it's very hard to just find like one singular good top deck in this situation. Yeah, and now we said more. I think this is just, I mean, a formality at this point, and it will be draw or what advances at least uh, with this game one. Only 500 life points. What more draw? Yeah, I mean, I think like in the long term, it's probably fine for Josh to keep trying to play this. Um, you know, you never know what can happen. Your opponent can mess things up. You might be able to see a dream top deck. Uh, but also a really back and forth interactive matchup like this, at least you know when you get yeah. to play. Um, and that's it. Yeah, no, that's the last card. 1 0 to Joho. Yep. Joshua Schmidt faltering here as Joho takes game number one in this top eight. It's uh, quite a convincing uh, victory, but yeah. also, you know, these things happen. You, uh, you will just eventually not draw the cards that Absolutely. you need to see. I mean, you sit at the top eight, you roll your dice, snake eyes, you definitely don't feel good, but then uh, your opponent breaks, and uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's sometimes Yu-Gi-Oh, and we'll take it. So now we can do talk about the side decks. We already mentioned uh, what the plan from the Labyrinth deck might be, but what do you think about Joshua? <laughs> I mean, there's a card in that side deck we haven't seen in a while. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah. Shall we spoil it? No. Not yet? No, no, so, yeah. no, not yet. No, okay. not yet. No, maybe right. not. Maybe if it, yeah. maybe not. Maybe, maybe let me not. But, I mean, maybe it will not. be this one, honestly. Yes, my sure. Apart from the other ones, uh, I can't yeah. really... Yeah, it seems like he only has 
one card in his side deck for this matchup, but oh boy, is that a card. But that'll that'll again, be a throwback. We'll yeah. see if it uh, ends up coming down here. Now, Regardless on the side of though, Juho, yeah. um, I think his, uh, his, his sort of main deck is kind of decide, designed to just sort of, you know, be quite a good contender yeah. in this matchup regards. I think you bring in Eradicator regardless if you're going second. Sure. I think sure, it's I say, really yeah. important. Do you think you bring in something like Droll against Runic turn one? It's kind of weird, right? I like was some... never a fan, honestly, because no? they can use it in the draw phase, you know, the Yugin, and then uh, I, I don't really like it, because mm. it depends on the other engine, usually. Against Runic by itself is not the best, so if the other engine, you know, searches a lot, then it's good. Joshua's deck is kind of an in-between, but I do think his own copies of the Beasteals might actually be interesting. Yeah, that's no. what I was going to point out. I so... think the Beasteals are incredible against Josh's deck here, because there's a... Josh is essentially playing a Beastial deck with the Runic engine, but also supplemented with the Quem and the Cartesia as a synchro engine. Yeah. Uh, and hitting those light and dark monsters is really, really strong. So I think Juho's definitely going to want to bring in those Beastials mm -hmm. for this matchup here in the Eradicator. Probably taking out that Nibiru. I don't think, yeah, uh, I don't think it's needed, popping honestly. off too yeah. hard with that. No, for sure. But as you can see, it's taking a bit of time. Uh, it's uh, not an obvious matchup. I want to say it was probably the only one in the top 64 with the deck, right? And uh, it's definitely something we have not seen at all this weekend. So you can see how, you know, you need to take a little bit of time to just uh, improvise your strategy. And uh, hopefully, you know, that goes well. But at the end of the day, you still have game three if things turns around. And uh, that gives you a bit of confidence here. But uh, without further ado, I think they're almost done with their side acts. So let's find out who will be the winner of game two. Welcome back, everyone. If you're just joining us here now, we are currently in top eight of YCS Bologna. We've got the world champion of Macedo, Joshua Schmidt, against world competitor Juho An here. Juho took down game one with an unfortunate opening hand from Josh, and we're going to give it another shot here mm -hmm. and see if uh, maybe Josh can open something a little bit more convincing there. Try and show off this strategy okay. to a little bit more of a stronger extent as we activate the effect of freezing curses special summoning out of the deck uh, out of the extra deck the copy of hugen discarding yep. another Ooh, Ooh, infinite but impermanence. impermanence this might be a big one huge Let's see. disruption it's... here as we stop the oh we already hard drew the nice. fountain that's massive oh wow okay if we have another runic card to trigger this fountain that's going to be huge i think he might have passed because I think Joe is thinking now, maybe on a furniture. Yeah, okay. this might be it. I think Joshua oh, passed. Oh, wow. Passes on the fountain. Uh, and yeah, Juho just going with the Kook Clock into the Chandra Glear, getting the trap from the deck in the end phase. Runic okay. Destruction baited. That's incredible. Oh, wow. The read on that. That is amazing. Now, the Runic Destruction results destroying the trap card. Uh, we can't actually uh, use it because we didn't have... Did we hit a lovely? We hit a yeah. lovely off the top of the Runic. So, oh, wow, that is Karma here. And then on the new chain, the Runic Fountain gets to activate and target three in the graveyard. And oh. now we get to draw three cards. Wow. What an incredible display Wait of uh, reading there. But we, we used the Cool Clock first, right? Yeah. Because then... You couldn't have just chained it? Uh, do you not need to control That's a... No, because otherwise... Let me check. Let's double check the text you know on what the I mean? clock. I think so. But I think you need to control a Labyrinth card in order to use that trap, right? Mm, no. Yeah. In order to use the trap, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's why. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, so moving on here, Juho is going to uh, begin the turn with a normal summon Ariana. So, huge destruction coming out in the end phase there. And now we can, uh, well, it's some kind yeah, of commiseration this is now here. super rough. Basically a double bait with the impermanence and then the destruction and yeah. This was a huge risk. I mean, Joe thought about it, but wow. The Runic dispel. dispelling here. Yeah. This could hit something very important out of the hand here. We're going to chain the Ku Clock and chain the Stovey Torby. Makes sense. As well as a trap card to discard set from the deck here again. I curious what Juho's hand advantage is here. He might be complete. I don't no, think no, he has, has any zero cards zero cards because yeah, Dispelling okay. would have discarded one, you know? Yeah, so actually, uh, that's also... Yeah, no. Really good play from Juho there, just, uh, dodging the Dispelling. 
Um, but regardless, it is still a uh, valuable card in the grave because if Josh drew into any other runic and can then trigger it again to draw two more, Juho is going to be quite low on resources right now. But we do have the Ku Clock that is active. Brings itself back here from the discard of the Stovi Torby. The trap card is live. Let's see if Josh does have a response for this, though. Thinking on resolution here. No, it doesn't look like it. Looks like we're going for a Link Summon here into Relinquish to Anima. And that is a Whoa. flashing fire from the hand. Destroy a special summon monster on the field here. Do we have more Runics to draw three, or are we gonna, just going to go for the draw two? Draw Change the welcome the into Ash Blossom! Ash Blossom. Yeah. And Joyous Spring! The most important hand trap against Labyrinth. Denying the special summon out of the deck here, and I think Juho is just down huh. to an Ariana. Yeah, and the relinquished. It. Yeah. Yeah, this might be a quick one, honestly. It doesn't seem like he's got two. Yeah, much. we don't even have a discard for Muckraker. Okay, uh, gonna chain Big Welcome here to bounce the Ariana to the hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, flashing fire resolves. We're going to hit a couple off the top of the deck. There goes the one off Magnemut as well. So uh, Lovely and Magnemut gone this game here. So because we bounced the Ariana to the hand, we now get to trigger both of our furniture here. We've got the Chandraglier and the Stovitori back to the wow, hand. Into the tip. tip. Tip from the hand. That's the best one. We get to get a search here. And now the fountain potentially. Uh, I think you know, this is Will. definitely where you will use the fountain here. The draw three cards. This is so, so much advantage from Joshua. Yep. Yep, there it is, Runic Fountain resolving to draw three from the top of the deck here. Every single turn you can draw this many cards. It's absolutely crazy. We haven't even seen the Synchro plays yet come out from Josh. Which just goes to show you just how good the Runic cards are versus Labyrinth. Especially. Plus from a moment in which basically it was quite over. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we thought like that wasn't the greatest or strongest opening at all from Josh, but it can't be understated just how good that end phase runic destruction bait was. This might be it, right? And that's it. Yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah, no, scoops it up. Juho realizes walk. he is far behind in resources and concedes game number two here. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to go into a game number three. Wow, that is exciting. Yeah, what a start to this top eight. Honestly, we mentioned it. Two amazing players. Uh, None of them was going to go down without an effort and without a fight. And this is exactly what's going on here. You can see the large crowd gathering to watch this amazing match live here at Bologna. But now it all comes down to this last five cards for one of these duelists. They will be knocked out and the other one will advance to the semi-final. But it's game. Joho. Yeah, game number three here. This is going to be really exciting because I did want to see Joho go first post siding. The all-important Eradicator Epidemic Virus yeah, in the side deck might sure. be coming out here. Can we resolve it turn one <laughs> against the spell deck? Yeah, I mean, that he's looking forward to it, point. honestly. I mean, I think he's not going to change his side deck that much. Because, no. like, I think it's going to be the same cause uh, as his side deck uh, in the second second game. Yeah, um, yeah I mean, it, it, we really need to capitalize on the Eradicator, honestly. Yeah, yeah absolutely. That's the most important card here. And still, uh, I mean, there's the... For Josh, yeah, there is... Uh, there is still one card. There's, there's still one card that <laughs> maybe... We, could we see. will see. Yeah. But, uh, Maybe we could see it. Yeah. All right. Uh, this is going to be an exciting duel here. I can't wait to see who takes this down here. This has been an incredible game too, at least uh, if not for game one, unfortunate brick there. But you know that that was just an incredible back and forth, and Josh really showing the uh, expertise and experience from uh, some of those plays there. So I think our uh, no, we're still siding up here. Yeah. No. Game number three. I mean, I think. Both players are probably quite used to uh, the emotions, the highs, the lows that you can feel at this point in the game. Just got to stay in it and focus on the duel, right? Yeah, absolutely. And as mentioned, they have both been multiple times at this stage before, but very different uh, careers, as you mentioned. It's not often that a World Championship competitor is the underdog, but Joe is one of those players who has been uh, on a roll, but still missing that win. Uh, and uh, the same cannot be said for Joshua, who obviously has been here multiple times before. But it is all down to one last game, five last cards for one of these two duelists. Uh, let's find out who will advance to the top four.
And it's game number three here with the final fist bump. Who will be taking this down? Joshua Schmidt, Juho An in this last and final game for okay, this and we top see the eight. Butler yeah. right away, which is a great start. Butler Ariana is a massive Oof. start, actually. We get to uh, discard the Butler. That lets you set a trap from your hand, and you get to activate it this turn. Ariana gets you the welcome from the deck here. Now we're going to go big welcome, we big ash. welcome, special summon. No oh. Ash Blossom from Joshua Schmidt this time. Does get to resolve the big welcome, and that's a huge... Big, big start. Yeah, yeah that's... Uh, that's Probably uh, a massive, massive swing right here in Juho's favor. Let's see if Josh can uh, counter this because we are going to have a card sniped out of our hand right now. Let's see if we can see any uh, interesting techs or side deck cards coming out here. Wow. Let's take a look. Five it is. That's and a it's runic, runic card. destruction. Okay, not the best, not the worst. Yeah, I don't think you're too upset about hitting a runic card. At least flashing fire is kind of nice to have here, but that's going to wow. be set three. Did we hard draw it? Can we set it up? End phase. Magna, Magna mod. mod. Why the one wow. Magna mod it is. Yeah, there goes uh, Butler here. Magna mod in the end phase yeah. gets a search for a dragon. That's most likely going to get the Bestial Labellion from the deck. Very important card that you access in the graveyard. Discarding, adding from deck to the hand, special summoning onto the field, and getting the Regained up, which we have not seen yet in this duel, but it is actually a massive yeah. part of Josh's strategy. We didn't even get to talk about it, but Josh <laughs> is playing Cartesia, Quem, and uh, the uh, Regained, which is like a whole point of the strategy is to do a sort of a synchro well, uh, style see. deck. Are we going to see anything in the draw phase from Joel? Yeah, no, standby phase coming up here. Do we go straight into the main phase or is Josh going to go Doesn't straight? Doesn't seem like yeah, it. Nothing here in the main phase. Does you he have it? Thinking. Does he have <laughs> yeah, it? You know main I'm phase one. About it. No, nope, nope. doesn't look like it. All right. Oof. Starts Oof. with a bestial labellion discard to add from deck to the hand here. No targets left for the bestials that we search here. We ideally want to leave this Labellion in the grave. Yeah, but for now, we don't see the Eradicator play we talked about, and uh, yeah. yeah. So I think, uh, what is it we have set? Welcome, big welcome, and a mystery spell. Oof, wow, but there is a Droll and Lockbird. Lock. Okay. Wow, let's see. Yeah, keeping the Droll and Lockbird in, or bringing it in rather from the side deck here is uh, quite important because this matchup, you will be drawing a lot of cards. So uh, we might be forced into some synchro plays here, potentially, we'll see. Just exactly how Josh plays it out. Lots of runic cards do have the ability to facilitate some of those nice extra deck plays. As we lead first and foremost with Labellion, a free special summon built in from the graveyard. Do we have anything on summon? We probably want to try remove this yeah. to stop the regain from hitting the field. The regain is so, so strong. Yeah. Let's see if there is a response from this. Do you think it's worth maybe just letting this resolve and then hitting the regain so that it's gone for good? rather than just hitting the Lebellion. Because at least that way, it, you know, it's it's not going to be able to be recurred. Yeah, but this way around, you can actually still access <laughs> the uh, Eradicator combo if you want. So this yeah. is all down to Joshua. Big welcome. Do we have... We need to probably change something in resolution yeah, you can here. Chain yeah, chain a yeah. Bestial or you can Freezing chain... Okay, that's, yeah. that's a good one. Yeah, okay. So Trap is being chained. Oh, I think they're double-checking that you can't respond to normal Trap cards, right? But... Uh, Double check the text on Lovely here. It says uh, uh, monster effects. In activation, yeah, okay, yeah. so it's just monster effects. Uh, so we can use the freezing curses in response here. Let's see if we head off the top. We got a Daruma cannon. That's a one of. That's one of the. That's a. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of crazy things about the uh, runic cards is that they all do three different things. They either have some sort of utility on the field, they can special summon from the extra deck, so it's instant fusion and a card and a random banish off the top here, so a ton of value that wow. these things offer you. As expected, we had the Cook Lock, which means the last card should be something that we can use, right? No, it doesn't go for oh, it. Interesting. Okay. okay. There's the Regained being set up here, and that is a massive portion of the uh, Beastial strategy, is resolving Regained yeah. multiple turns, getting multiple searches with Magnemite, and Such recycling back card. into the deck to draw. If you enjoy drawing cards, this is definitely the deck for you. That's the whole point of the strategy, and it looks like uh, we're not going to be using anything on Juho's side to stop this regains. Okay, and a slumber coming down. Third Runic in the graveyard. 
Uh, but also, this is most likely going to try and go for the fountain. Oof, oh, there's is that a barrier. dimensional, dimensional barrier? barrier? Okay, yeah. hey, all right. That was what the last mystery card was. And I think... So I think Juho waited because he was unsure if maybe Josh would have another chainable card. Yeah, uh, he really wants to try resolve this lady uh, here. We know about the... Yeah. Yeah, we do have the Bestial Druid's Worm. Yeah, and uh, we can chain that. I think uh, Joe thought that he couldn't, but th this might be a big of a misstep because now the Lovely is negated. And if he used it in the same chain, it wouldn't have still resolved, you know? And so he could not chain the Bestials. But now he can because obviously Lovely is negated. Yeah, so that's actually a huge point here. Um, Juho probably should have used that in response to the freezing curses, as you mentioned, because then you would have been guaranteed yeah. to uh, get your Lady search, and then the Lady would get you the Eradicator. The uh. clock has already resolved, so we would get a free trap from the deck, essentially, but that's really unfortunate. Yeah, bit of an unfortunate play here, maybe from Juho, but... SP Little Knight is summoned to the field here. And Drew's Worm can activate now to send the card from the field to the graveyard. Potentially putting the Lady back into the grave. Quite annoying to deal with from its targeting protection, but no sets on the field here. Josh opts to go for the Lovely instead. That there's just one sec card, it seems, from Joshua. Obviously, has to skip the battle phase yet. So he's under uh, Droll and Lockbird, but can you regain return the Magnemon anyway? I don't think you can activate the uh, regain to return no, even no. Uh, if you don't draw just because of the draw and log part having already previously resolved in this turn. If you're wondering why Josh has not drawn any cards, yeah. it's because of the all-important draw. And now we are uh, back to Joe. He has obviously the big welcome, you know, compulsory-like effect. Uh, but... okay, Ooh, another slumber. slumber. Okay, to protect. Josh still not having access to that runic fountain. That's how you keep your resources up here. So unfortunate that he does not have access to that all-important draw engine. And we still have not seen a synchro play here. He could be welcome in a way, I guess. Uh, but he's thinking about what to do, yeah. So considering the effect of SP Little Knight, kind of banishes itself and the uh, lady, potentially. Yeah, the thing is, there is no face down, so yeah. Uh, yeah. Ooh, That's a Labyrinth off. Labyrinth off the top of the deck here. More one-offs being hit. I suppose if you play so many one-offs like that in your deck, you are going to see them. But these are very fortunate Runic Banishes here. And does get to trigger the Regain because we hit a Light and a Dark. Puts it back. Josh gets to draw another card. Two in hand here. Going to go up to three on his turn. Normal Summon Ariana. That's huge. Get to uh, try and build up those resources again. Yeah. At the same time, again, though, I don't know. We don't know the cards in hand, uh, I think, outside of the cool clock, maybe. But, yeah, if he had a spell and trap, it would have been really nice to set that and then try to attack, because then the little knight would have been useless. But All right, going for the Stovey Torby here. Activates the cool clock, and then activates the Stovey Torby for the and second another draw. draw. Okay. Second draw on Lockbird here. It's going to get the... Uh, that's, well, that's Juho's last card as we've depleted our hand, getting the big welcome from the deck onto the field. It is live this turn. We can bring back that lovely, which is extremely important. Okay, so this is a real nail biter here. Both players not looking like they're in the best of control. But that's oh, an Ash Blossom off the ash. top from that regained draw. Yeah. Oh, big, big so top deck fortunate. From Joshua. Huge top wow. deck. That, nice one. Yeah, that 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 really is a massive turn here. Joho arguably was in a bit of a strong position, I think. If we resolve that, we'd bring back Lovely. We trigger like 27 effects in the yeah. graveyard. But Ash Blossom coming down on the big welcome and passes turn, it looks like. Over to Josh here. This is the end phase, checks graveyard, Huge and top now... deck here, let's see what he picks up. If we can get fountain access, Josh is going to be in a really, really strong spot. The if deck he... is... Uh, sorry, the grave is filled with runics. Yeah, he needs more bestials, maybe. Let's see, because that could be the one. Otherwise, he doesn't have enough cards to activate the Yugin, you know? Yeah, there's... Uh... I think he has two cards in hand, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So still uh, 
a while away from getting to that fountain and being able to resolve it. Unless we hard drew fountain maybe in another runic, that would work, but triggering regained again would be really strong. It's a very close one. Ooh, and Abyssal is huge. That's, that's, that's one of the best ones, yeah. You needed a Abyssal here, for sure. Do we have a way to protect Lovely? No, we don't. Lovely has left the building. She is gone and banished, and I don't think we have a win. There, there it is! There goes Sekka! That's the card we were talking about in between side decking. A blast from the past. That is a yeah. throwback. We're still really hyped, I'm sorry, you know, but there's uh, clearly no value here. The Jewel doesn't yeah. have any set cards, uh, but still. Incredible to see Denko Seca being summoned in 2023. Yeah. Regardless, it made an appearance. With it, so, <laughs> there yeah. we go. She's here uh, using it as link fodder. Contact into a Chaos Angel. That's a light and a dark Chaos yeah. Angel, by the way. Protected from monster uh, effects as well as battle. Not too huge versus Labyrinth because there are lots of traps that can deal with the Chaos Angel. But in such a simplified game state, it is going to be uh, quite relevant here. Okay, choosing to use the big welcome in response to the Chaos Angel targeting the Lady, chaining the SP Little Knight, banishing itself and the Lady until the end phase here. And the Sarinir gets to dump a Ball Drake from the deck to the grave now. And then that triggers the Regained as well, so now Josh also gets to draw a card. Yeah, this is big. Big, big, big. If I'm... Uh, not One mistaken draw. here, Josh is looking like we're in quite a good spot right now. It's close. If it's we get this fountain online, it's going to be massive. It's close. He only has a card, pretty much. And it's a spell, but I can't quite tell which. Very close game. This one is down to the wire. It could be any one game, and it's a face down card. Now we'll skip the battle phase, I believe, and then it's back to draw. Yeah, SP Little Knight returns here, and uh, now Juho is uh, should return his lady here. No, oh no, it was shuffled it back to their gain. Yeah, of no. course. Yeah, so uh, SP Little Knight just acting as a banish. Every turn, I suppose, if you have uh, a light and a dark to get rid of, that is, yeah, what a ridiculous interaction, Insane. actually. <laughs> Absurd. It's just one card on Juho's side here. Double checking the text on Chaos Angel. Yep, it is going to be a problem. Some resources in the graveyard here. We might have a big welcome in there still. Task yeah, there is now. another one, uh, but yeah, that yeah. might be the only line that he has, and that's not really a good one. Yeah, I think uh, we might need to go for big welcome on our own Ariana, so that we can at least get some value. Uh, but, then, our, uh, yeah, again, but then you're stuck in a hard place yeah, here. Yeah, because again, the, the little knight is there, so yep. it's tough. Yeah, little knight with 1600 attack as well as Ariana, so it's not even like you can bait by going into the battle phase. Well, he's doing it anyway, I suppose. And I guess Josh will... Oh, right, of course! The Chaos Angel protects all dark monsters from being destroyed by battle, correct? Yeah. Oh, no! That's... Uh, it's, things are turning from bad to worse here from yeah, Juho. This First with that trap interaction on that D-barrier, as you mentioned rough. in the previous turn. Now, I think this experience and the nerves and emotions are getting in the way right now. This is not great from Juho. <laughs> This is really unfortunate. Yeah, very unfortunate here from Joe. What do we have left? Linker <laughs> Like, what can we yeah, do? Yeah, Anima, yeah. Anima into not really much here. Yeah, this is uh, this is rough, uh, and this is looking like uh, now uh, the entire game is looking towards Joshua. Resolving the uh, regained here. Yeah, Normal summon Ku Clock. Oh, I didn't realize he was playing multiple Ku Clocks. Okay. Um, what can you really do here? There's no cards in the hand for the discard of Muckraker. What Link 2 can you possibly make here? His own Little Knight, potentially. Little Knight targeting the Regained. And that's one thing to uh, get rid of. I mean, on the plus side, Juho's is technically a higher rarity, so he's got that <laughs> going for him. Maybe it vanishes too, I don't know. Fair there enough. goes the uh, Regained now. And that's it, I think. Yeah. yeah. Past turn. Wow. Oh no, Josh looks like he might be uh, edging closer to victory here. 8,000 life points to take away. I think we didn't use a runic last turn and we did skip our last battle phase. Yeah. So we do have 
We do have the battle phase. We here, have the yeah. battle phase this turn, and this will be a bunch of damage and only one more yes. top deck for Joe. 35 into 16, plus the SP Little Knight and the Baldrake here dealing damage. Josh with a set card, a top deck, the Little Knight interaction. Uh, not so relevant right now, I suppose, with the regain, but when you're in such a simplified game state, top decking, I mean, what can you really see here? Pot of Extravagance into Ariana? Yeah, into... Into the, the, the dream, <laughs> right? Like, you just, you need absolute heart of the card custom draw here, basically. And the Runic tip! Well, that's the tip as well. Special summoning out the Jerry. Duality is away the well. Jerry. Okay, we get the Fabled Unicorn. Wow. <laughs> and attacks with the Fabled Unicorn for a game. That's it. GG. Joshua Sch Schmidt takes away. Top eight with the reverse sweep to Oonju. Oh, wow. What a, what a match. game. What a yeah. match. <laughs> Honestly, I mean, what, I'm not expecting this at all. Joshua, stay calm. And uh, I mean, after losing game one, uh, yeah. Congrats. Top we could four. say not the Denko Seca that we expected. <laughs> Lake but material. It worked. It worked. It worked into that Chaos Angel. And overall, what a match it was. Very much uh, everything that you can hope for a Yu Gi Oh match. It started with some drama with, you know, the Snake Eyes into though, the brick from Joshua. And it looked as if Joe could walk away with it. But then Game 2 was as quick as uh, probably nothing else this weekend uh, in terms of Swift victories and game three wow honestly i think there is so much that both of these duelists can consider and probably joe will look back at a lot of the plays there were a lot of different decisions to make and i still think as probably you know there were multiple lines in which you could have had an advantage but yeah it's really unfortunate especially when you get gifted a game essentially you know josh really uh, yeah you know kind of just gave away the game one you know well you know <laughs> indirectly by uh just not drawing anything. Joho, all you had to do was win one more of the two games. You yeah, had and, it uh, for yourself, but I mean, the game two, I mean, yeah, it was uh, full control by Josh in game three. I think Joho really just made too many missteps there. I think I, so as well. Yeah, I think he had the opening uh, to get into the top four. If you think about it, he had the Butler, uh, the Ariana, and the Drawling Lock, which we really thought was going to pay in. Don't but think you can ask for better. No, yeah. but I think the turning point was that dimensional barrier. I think the game uh, maybe would have not been over, but it would have been completely different uh, yeah. if he just chained the barrier there, because the Lovely was not negated yet, so Joshua could not answer with a bestial and that i think the entire game would have been yeah. completely and even then around. you could argue it was salvageable potentially but then josh top deck yeah. that ash blossom from yeah. the games and i think yeah, that I mean, was that what sealed that it that changed the game once again entirely you know but uh, still i mean congrats to juho for the top eight i mean what a run what a year for him and he has been and uh, i mean still congrats and uh, josh advanced into the top four now and uh, he has a chance to bring uh, home another wasius title yeah, yeah, but the competition is still fierce. Uh, we did mention it and in our top eight interviews uh, that we have a stacked roster for this YCS. Uh, even just uh, the next uh, match lining up, uh, Joshua will be facing against the winner between Gabriel Nets and Dinka Bui. That's not an easy top four match. That's another Titanic matchup. Yeah. But regardless, thank you a lot, guys, for being with us with the top eight. Uh, but before we go on a break, let's hear it from Joshua and Ed. Yes, I am here with Joshua, who's just advanced into the top four here at YCS Bologna with some serious main character energy going through that duel. Now, Josh, let's talk about that duel, because game one, we saw that you sort of, did you brick game one? The, I, I, it was funny, because before the match, we were talking, and he was like, that match was pretty bad for me, unless you brick, and I was like, I don't think my deck can do that. Like, I don't think my deck does that ever. You jinxed it. I, I did. That was my fault. Game one was my fault. I, I just do like an impossible No runic spell. I play like 17 of those. Uh, no access to the tuners, just bestials and duality. And then in game two, you pretty much out-resourced Juho, but there were some really amazing exchanges. Talk to us about, especially after a slightly weaker start in game one, how were you feeling in game two with all the exchanging? It was, again, not the, the best possible start, because once again, I didn't have access to a tuner, so it was just a runic card. It's not even like much bestial energy going on. So he could have very well taken that with a little bit of a better hand. I had the Ash, though, which is really good against that deck. And so the game two, runic cards are really good against Labyrinth cards. So that was, uh, I, I think if that's a different matchup, 
maybe I might lose that with a hand like that, where I only have the Rooney cards, but against Labyrinth, it was uh, enough, luckily. It certainly was. Now, let's talk about Game 3, because there was a lot to happen here. So, Juho started really well with Butler and Ariana to start, so that's already a really good start for Labyrinth. But you managed to ash the big welcome. So then he just passed down, so that's already a huge moment. We then saw Denko Seca as well, which was a nice big throwback. And then your Chaos Angel protected SP. Yeah. So do you want to just let people know what was happening with that interaction? Because it was a little bit of a misplay from Juho. Uh, well, since Chaos Angel was made with light and a dark, it actually protects all the monsters by being destruction by battle. And he, he read the card, and he the, the, the first effect is it makes synchro monsters unaffected by... Um, by your opponent's monster effects, right? That effect only applies to synchro monsters. So he thought both effects only apply to synchros. Okay, right. But the, the battle destruction, uh, battle protection one actually applies to all of your monsters. So he just lost the Ariana for, yeah. Okay, and then obviously there was the big moment with your duality into the unicorn and then attack for game. So must be feeling pretty good. You're no stranger to topping these events, but how does it feel at this point going to the top four? Do you feel nerves at this point or do you feel pretty confident? Uh, I, I am nervous. Yeah. I, I'd like to think the other three are probably going to be a little bit more nervous than I am, but uh, <laughs> I, I still feel very nervous, and I really want to. I really want to take this home. And it's just two more, and the closer you get, the more excited you get. So, dang right. Well, best of luck to you in those next matches. Let's hopefully see you in the final, guys. Don't go anywhere because that top four feature match is hopefully going to be here very soon. And then after that, we're into the grand final of YCS Bologna. Don't go anywhere.